Welcome back to Champions at Day 2, where we've got Paper Thin jumping on the desk to help us out here for series number two of the day. And my dude, we already saw one tournament favorite take to the stage, get challenged in a way that I think many didn't expect to see. And lo and behold, we're treated with another tournament favorite stepping onto the stage next with Sentinels taking on Furia. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be really exciting. Sentinels, of course, is going to be the favorite coming into this. There's no doubt about it. They're an excellent, excellent team, top to bottom. They struggled a little bit, of course, at Masters 3, but I think for them, a lot of it's just going to be readjustment, coming in with the right mentality, and really coming into this tournament, you know, focused on winning and not kind of dealing with some of the outside stuff. And talking about, you know, kind of that, uh, that step back, at Masters 3. In a weird way, that kind of mirrors the conversation we were having around Gambit coming into the first series of the day, where our last, you know, kind of uh, opportunity to see them play was a disappointment, I put in air quotes, as Shazam yeah. said, our worst performance so far, and yet they still went pretty far. I feel like it's Groundhog Day for me on the desk. I was on the last <laughs> desk, I'm on this desk, and I'm like, yeah, another redemption story for one of the favorites. I'm all about that life. I'm about it. We also replaced uh, one man lacking hair with another man lacking hair on the desk. Yeah, I, we uh, always have to point this out, don't we, Paper Thin, every time we get on the desk. I mean, I just wanted people to understand that I am not actually Ryan Central or Thank Tom. You. We are actually different people. Mm -hmm. and we're never always in the same place at the same time, so I'm not sure if it's always confirmed if right. we're the same person or not. That's true. I've never seen you all in the uh, same take room. Take my word for it. Take we'll keep word. making a point to point it out, though, to people. Uh, <laughs> don't worry about that. But when it comes to Sentinels and and uh, what has been their effort to kind of, uh, you know, take a next step in, in the right direction to evolve as a team, mm -hmm. I think one of the things that everybody is going to look to is the addition of a coach, a famously yes. coachless team now has brought on Rockus to help him out. You know, there's a lot to say about teams who are willing to step back and say, we don't know everything. We can't fix all of our own mistakes ourselves. And players should play and coaches should coach. And I know myself, having come into multiple teams and having to pick up those minutia mistakes that teams make, there are weaknesses, no matter the team. And of course, Sentinels has learned recently, they themselves possess quite a lot of them. So a coach can do that background work. Players can focus on the playing and the scrimming and the training and even VOD review wise, maybe the coach is picking up a lot of the time that they were putting in elsewhere. I think there's going to be a number of questions about how this Sentinels roster bounces back from a Masters performance, but there's been so much time between then and now you've got to believe they've put in the work, and so more what I'm interested in, Paper Thin, is the individuals and how they're going to step up to it, and I'm going to cite Sean Garris from the top of the day, day one yesterday, where he said, when I think Sentinels, I think Tens. Yes. He is a superstar. Already is cementing himself as that in the Valorant space, but when you're at the World Championship, you need your superstars to perform. Exactly. He's the first player that I can remember watching that just had my jaw on the floor. Especially with the snipers. He can get it done so, so well with those. I mean, I think he's the best marshaller in the world. I think he is absolutely the best marshal that I've ever seen. So I love to watch him play. Just top to bottom, this guy is phenomenal. He backs up his teammates when needed. Uh, you know, of course, he's pretty much playing exclusively duelist, but that's where he thrives. You can see he's got great stats top to bottom. I mean, a 2.0 KDA is absolutely filthy in Valorant. He is nuts, and he was kind of the saving grace for them towards the end of Masters 3. You get that on one map, you're feeling good. You yeah. get that as your map average over your career? That is disgusting. And it's not even just map average. We're looking attacking and defensive side, and uh. sometimes your jet player, your duelist, will be the one that is like making space on attack, but lacks a little bit on defense. That's okay, you let it go. But Tens goes attack, defense, I don't care what side I'm on. I hit my shots no matter which side of the map I'm on. Good on him, but I will say, that's a lot of pressure on your shoulders to keep up and elevate. I mean, that is right. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. The idea of pressure and the idea that he has set a bar for himself. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll cite Reykjavik as that moment where he set that bar as they took the trophy. And, you know, maybe to some degree in those moments where they fell down in Masters 3, you would maybe target him and say, hmm, was expecting a little bit more. But now we turn our attention to the team that has to challenge them, and that's Afuria. Another team, just like Team Secret, that perhaps the global audience doesn't know a ton of about. So, Paper Thin, I turn to you. What's the expectation when you take a look at this squad? Well, I mean, you, you got to feel like they're a pretty massive underdog coming in against a Masters champion. But with what we just saw here on this stage with Team Secret previously, I absolutely feel like there's a chance. Sometimes things just get in the air. It just takes one team to come through at the beginning of a day, show that the top teams are vulnerable, and then all of a sudden there's a ton of confidence flowing through these underdogs. And a team like Furia absolutely can get it done. Uh, 
they're fun to watch. To be honest, I, I really enjoyed watching them at the South American LCQ. I thought they did very, very good, uh, especially Khalil, in my eyes, was really the star for this team. Really does a great job playing off contact, being that second line of defense or offense for these guys. And absolutely, you got to watch this guy. He's been pretty much exclusively playing Killjoy, which is kind of interesting. He hasn't shifted to anything else as of recent times. I mean, he's played a lot of their stuff in the past, but he's been exclusively Killjoy recently. All right, so Khalil, we got a beautiful shot of him, last guy into the arena there as you're talking about him, but his matchup today. You uh, mentioned the Sentinels, you mentioned the KJ in particular. Well, guess what? On the other side is another Sentinel Titan. And that, of course, is Dapper. I mean, look how Dapper is looking in his photo, too. He, <laughs> they're always exuding confidence on the side of Sentinels. And if you're looking to the side of Furia, Khalil has to be the guy that is going to match up here with Dapper. For those who don't know Dapper very well, and I, I argue you should probably know who he is by now. He's made his presence known. Cypher, Killjoy, Viper, and Sova in the past 10 games. That's not a bad agent pool. Yeah, well, uh, while the ACS may not match uh, that of 10s, we called out a 2.0 KDA. And so I feel like we have to to do it again. Mm -hmm. Sporting one himself there is Khalil. So again, looking at him to be a difference maker for Fury if they're going to look to make the upset possible. Yeah, he, he doesn't play point of contact very well. That I would say that's kind of a weakness, but he's a Killjoy player. That's not what he's expected right. to do. He's expected to be the follow-up behind Xan. Well, a lot of times, he's the second player right behind Xan, covering for some of Xan's failed entries, and he's solid. He's always popping heads. He's always being in the right place at the right time. He recovers well uh, when his team is faltering. He's the first man that's kind of rotating over quickly to help if things have gone awry and he's really heady. I, I really like the way he plays. He covers his teammates very well. He lays down cover fire at the right times at the right points. He's a really smart player. So here's my question. Where are the holes for Sentinels that Furia can attack? Because ultimately, when I again, if I reference the first series of the day, mm -hmm. uh, I, I talked about how Secret might be the explosive team in that Gambit might look to control. And in fact, the success that they found in map one mm -hmm. came from control, it I did. think, more so than it did explosiveness. Sentinels, I feel like, is a more explosive squad. And so I would naturally think, okay, you're looking to control them. You're looking to, uh, you know, stop those first frags, the first bloods that maybe Tens is looking to find. But, but at this point, I feel like anything I expect is going to go the other way. Yeah, absolutely. I think coming in with expectations is actually the weakness that would come out for both of these teams. I don't think coming in and trying to quote-unquote counter-strat or anti-strat, as some people would call it, is the way to go. Because we've seen how that went, especially with Team Secret. They brought it to their opponents on map one, but then all of a sudden adaptations happen. And you have to adapt to the adaption to the adaption. It's just like this adaption cycle you can't break out of. Instead... How about you play your own game? I want to see what Fury has. Show me what you are. Show me your identity. And Sentinels, whether or not they can adapt to that or not, will be the question. I like what you're talking about here, the identity. The identity for mm -hmm. both of these teams as of recent times has been attacker side. They yeah. both have gotten a lot of their heavy lifting done on that side of the coin. So I feel like for Furia, it's really going to be all about getting kind of pressure on the attacker side. They have to have a successful attacker side. And then can they have a better defender side than Sentinels? I think that's going to be really, really challenging. And a big part of that is, of course, like you mentioned earlier, Dash, Tens. He is great on both sides of the coin. That's what makes part of what makes Sentinels so difficult to deal with. Of course, a lot of this is also going to come down to the maps that we end up on. And so about to head into our map vetoes to figure out where these teams want to play. I just love this AR that we get, by the way. I always have to point it out whether or not I'm in the green room or I'm on the desk. This is absolutely amazing. It never fails. It just never fails to just so make amazing. me feel great. You feel Look. like you're really in some kind of virtual space with this. And whatever the first ban will be, I believe it might be Fury. It getting is going to go first. to Fury. Yeah. Whether or not, do they do a comfort ban? Do they do a target ban? I asked about the identity before for Fury. This will set the pace for me as to whether or not they want to play their own game or they're a little bit afraid of their opponent's end. It's going to be Bind being the first one off the board. Okay. Uh, this is just, I think, Furia just not comfortable. They haven't played this map in a long mm -hmm. time, so they just, uh, with this roster, I don't know if they've ever played it. So I think this is just them just being like, look, we're not really feeling this. Icebox is a pretty solid map for Furia, I think, coming out here from Sentinels for the ban. So uh, this is, I think, pretty not out of the ordinary for both these sides, especially Icebox has been really wonky in this tournament so far. Hey, I'll just say this from a viewer perspective. Bind, Icebox, two maps that we've already seen today. Yes. In a certain sense, I'm happy to see them off the table. We're going to get some new looks. And that, of course, map one, 
Ascent for Furia is going to be the first of those unique maps that we see today. Yeah, it's good that Ascent will come up as well. I want to highlight that Icebox ban as well because the last time Sentinels played it, I think they got 13-2, 13-3'd by G2. They didn't have a really nice ride on that map at all. So for them to get rid of it, I'm not surprised. And it's setting the pace here about who's playing what game here in the map vetoes. This is a game before the game. That is what the map vetoes are. And this is what they're going to be able to set the pace with Ascent and then Breeze. Oh, oh my goodness. Favorite thing, <laughs> Breeze. We talked tens. I mean, I am having flashbacks to some wicked rounds from him in previous tournaments. And again, it, it all starts on the pistol rounds if they can get a win. It doesn't matter if they get a win, to be frank. I mean, the Sentinels are going to be getting those marshals out early, setting the tone, setting the pace, and then you start funneling the big gun over to tens, and he just starts taking names. And, you know, it, it's 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 a lot of other things going on here. You know, maybe Dapper on the Viper, these types of things that also set up the plays, control the space. But, yeah, I mean, I know I feel like a broken record talking about tens, but Breeze is a map that is specifically meant for players who are good with snipers, good with long range, mm -hmm. and he is arguably the best in the world at those things. No. Oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, Fraxie going out, not going to see that map again. Fnatic kindly uh, put it on show <laughs> for us yesterday. At least we've gotten to see it once. We did, we did, but split. split. To follow. Okay. All right. Well, then we know what our final map yeah. will be. If we make it all the way there, it will be Haven, another open map. So for me, Breeze, I'm going to target that again as map number two. When we take a look at the dominance that Gambit displayed, that's the kind of thing I expect to see from top teams in a wide open map. When you kind of have that space to work with, I look for scores to be a little bit more lopsided. Let Tens create the space with the Marshal, with the Op, whatever gun he's got in his hands, and then kind of roll through with that man advantage. And then you mentioned too, even if they're on the defending side, you're looking at a man like Dapper to hold it down. Yeah. Really challenging. I, I kind of am interested about this Haven, the fact that Haven got through to the end. I think it's just a comfort thing for both teams. Uh, at the LCQ for Furia, they didn't lose on Haven. They won four games out of four on it, I believe. Or whatever it was, they won all of them. So it's a really strong map for them. They have a good eight, uh, map pool in general. But yeah, this is a pretty good one. It's, but it's going to come down to Ascent, right? Like this is yeah. this is where Furia is going to have to get it done. And they do something a little bit weird on Ascent where they do bring a Sage, which is pretty unusual these mm. days. So it, 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 at least in recent history, we'll see if that is going to continue to be the case. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. We got all the maps locked in. Of course, map number one is Ascent. And you brought it up earlier. Attacking half is going to be hugely important for this Furious squad. And so Sentinels having side choice, interesting that they go to defense. They're going to put the ball into Furious court and say, okay, come at us right out the gate. Let's see what kind of firepower you have in your back pocket. I like it. It shows confidence. It shows the mentality that I think that the Sentinels really need to have coming into this. That's That, for me, was the big thing I underlined here for the Sentinels for this event is mentality. And I like yeah. how we talked about earlier that there's the coaching staff being brought in. Like, you know, Jess is bringing up great points about how important, how crucial that is. But also, you know, you can see that these guys get a little bit flustered, they can get a little bit tilted, you'll see it out on social media, they'll kind of, you know, shoot a few things <laughs> off here and there, but I think for them it just needs to be come in, come focused, assert your dominance and take this over. It's not even just that for me anymore. If they're coming in with a coach and they've worked on their mistakes and whatnot, there's extra pressure. You've got your coach sitting three meters behind you, watching over your shoulder like a hawk. I mean, I sounded like Sky there, I just realized what I've done, boys. <laughs> Do not point it out, that's going to get clipped and I am the new Sky voice actress, my bad. I love but it. No, I will say that that is an extra added pressure to you and if mentality has been worked on which I hope it has been it's why you bring in a coach it's one of that secondary part of being a coach then you know full well that there are methods in play to be able to deal with that you see someone tilting break the ice mm -hmm. make sure you get the screams happening the air fists whatever you need to do I want to see that but if they're quiet I'm gonna be a little worried now admittedly this is a minor curiosity for me but Sentinel's famously a team that doesn't really go for the tack pauses in large cases because they didn't have a coach in pre previous tournaments. So Shaz has been pretty vocal about like, I don't need the tack pause. I've got that communication kind of constantly flowing with my team and I'd rather keep the momentum rolling forward. I'm just kind of curious. Will we see many if they find themselves on the back foot? Will they need that kind of reset? And how much of a role will Rockus play in terms of turning them around? I think it absolutely has to come through. I don't see any world where it shouldn't. I mean, whenever you need to get that reset, you need somebody to inject some kind of reason into your minds because whatever you're thinking isn't going well. You know, maybe something wonky comes out with the agent select and you're not quite mm -hmm. adapting to it properly. You know, we've seen the Sage here from Furia. That's on tape. They should kind of know what to expect the way that they use these walls to 
block off some of the flank angles, some of the mains on takes and retakes and things like that. They should be well prepared for that, but maybe there's a KO, maybe there's something else coming through that's going to catch them off guard. Well, maps are locked in. We're going to take a quick break, but on the other side, we're heading into map one, Ascent of Sentinels versus Furia. Catch you soon. Welcome back to Champions. As we narrow in towards map one of our second series of the day, it's Sentinels versus Furia, and we're heading to Ascent. We've already had the Sage call out by Paper Thin, mm -hmm. and I love that kind of setup when it comes to what Furia might bring to the table. But what about Sentinels? Because this was the map choice for Furia, so we know they have a game plan if that's where they want to take us first. Mm -hmm. I think the question remains, how will Sentinels respond? I think the biggest thing for me is to not set expectations since I, in the past 10 times they've played, it has not been on the radar for them in any way, shape, or form. Ascent could change for them. I don't think, like we saw before in our previous series, that there'll be an opportunity for them to change their identity too much. I don't think that's on the books for them. But what I will say is there should be a safe play, a play here by Sentinels, but I don't have anything in the past 10 games of them even playing this. I like that then. That means we've got some open questions heading mm -hmm. into that first map for Sentinels. And so time will tell. The teams are readying up right behind me. So let's dive on stage. Let's meet the teams before they dive into play. A new look for Sentinels as they stare down Furia on the other side of the stage. This time with a coach at the helm. And so we'll have to see if it's the, it's what's going to make the difference between them and a hope to become the first world champions here in Valorant. But it all starts in series number one. Mm -hmm. So you got to get it done. You got to get it done. You got to get it done on Ascent. So let's reset the table for everybody. Expectations here. We already know that Fury is willing to do a little, or willing to do the uh, unusual, shirk expectations and play with those agent compositions. But do you think it's enough to unseat a team like Sentinels? I don't think in the long run it will be. I think they're very solid as a team. They work together very well. That's one thing that really impressed me about Furia is their ability to play off of each other, to play with each other. There's always kind of that onion that there's layers beyond you know, the first line of defense. If Axan goes down, there's somebody right behind him, whether it be QCK or uh, Khalil. There's a lot of presence on this team in terms of just being there together, working together. So that's what Sentinels have to be ready for. You know what else Sentinels have to be ready for? I was looking through the win conditions here for Furia on Ascent specifically. They win a lot of their rounds 
pre-plant out of elimination. Mm. That is very unusual on your defensive side to not have a plant go down and for a predominant amount of your defensive wins as a win condition to be one pre-plant. Either they're going up against opponents. Now, I hate to speculate like this, but either they've been going up against opponents that have been rather easy and they've been able to kill them before the plant or that's their MO and we're expecting a lot of defensive aggression. Well, we got that bird's eye view of the map. Now we get Prime Gaming Agent Select. We're quick to see the lock-ins. We will have that Sage on the side of Fury, but for Sentinels, that's what I'm more curious about. A very well-rounded comp. No surprises there, I think. Yeah, this is basically what you would expect out of them at this point. Zom's on Astra, Dapper on the Cypher. That's going to be kind of one of the bigger stylistic differences here is you've got two different Sentinels. So Khalil plays plays a very unusual Killjoy. He's very aggressive with it because he's he's right behind the jet oftentimes. He's okay. not really sitting in the back lines like a lot of... A lot of Killjoys like, to, and he'll do this from time to time, a lot of Killjoys do like to sit in the back lines, cover the flanks, but you can kind of let the Astro do You can let Mazin do that here. And so he will follow in. And so that's, that's going to be very different than what I think a lot of people are used to seeing with a Killjoy. I think that's cool to hear, though, because double Sentinels starting on the attacking side, right? Some people would have some questions about that, but these teams are going to give us some answers soon enough. Predictions real quick. Sentinels, Furia, who takes it? I think Sentinels 2-0. I think Ascent's going to be pretty close, but after that, I think Breeze is going to be uh, pretty heavily in favor of Sentinels. Over here, Jess. It'd be disingenuous for me to not say Sentinels. Furia, unknown quantity. We've got to see what they've got, but I'd love a Team Secret story. I'd love for them for Please, all yes, me to almost yes. eat my words. I'm going to tell you that. There were some conversations in the van ride over here about how this could be the quickest day of champions oh, with the two tournament favorites. we got to stop listening to Mitch, say, man. Okay? Yeah, we we really got to stop listening to Mitch. They, they, at this point, that's already not the case. Let's see if Furia can give us the same thing. I'm very pleased to be throwing it over to DDK and Sean Garris for the call. Gents, take it away. Thank you so much, Dash. Yes, I'm here with Sean, and this is going to be an exciting one. Sean, I think, has made it pretty known that he thinks Sentinels will win the entire tournament. So I'm not going to ask you for a spicy take here, but yeah. we do have some interesting things because Sentinels haven't played any officials in quite some time, yes. and there has certainly been some changes and lots of rumors. So. Is yeah. everything you can tell us going straight into this one before yeah, we kick it off? Straight into it. And the last time we saw Sentinels on Ascent, Sick picked KO. The time before that, Phoenix. This is a very different look from Sentinels right off the bat. Love what I'm seeing from them. They're spread out across the map. And it looks like Fury is going for a mid control. Based on the spacing of the agents, I'm going to say they might go into a fast mid B split here, Dan. Absolutely. It will be interesting to see exactly how Sentinels decide to handle this one. We have some information sort after that. They're certainly going to be hearing the presence. Drone going up, there's a quick flash coming through to try to see if they're all the way to market just yet. But you can see the pace has stopped here for Fury. They're looking for a response after this initial pressure. Yeah, and you can see Mazin now is using that Astra to use the global abilities, help his team take mid, but now he's faded into A main. You can see the killjoy Khalil has pulled off of B main. This is now a cat split, Dan. They're going up. Oh, oh no, Soms will actually take one down through the Astra Smoke, through the Nebula. That's unfortunate there. Exan will fall, and it is slow progress to the site here, but QCK able to pick off one. Spike looking to get planted yeah. on the site now. Retake effort is coming through here. There's a quick flash, and Zephyrs will be slowed Spike slightly by that Nano Swarm. Perfect timing on that one as they look to go for a quad peak all the way up from Rafters here. And Tens, of course, kicking things off quite nicely, finding a quick headshot. The return, though, from Fury as they look to hold this one, but two players stuck, isolated underneath Rafters. In hell, Shazam will make quick work of NZR, and it's looking like it's getting a little bit tight here for Sentinels as they're moving in. Still some time left. There's the pressure on that spike. Mazin will take down Shazam, and it's leaving it all to Sick here. Two places to look. Not sure exactly where the other player is. Doesn't know that he's in hell. And that's it. Khalil will finish it off. Very well done from Fury, holding their nerf throughout the round. Excellent round there from Fury. The spacing on the sight hold, the Sage putting the wall up. QCK put the wall up right there at Tree Dan. Peeked over the Nebula, got the frag into heaven, and that was the initial trade that got Fury into the site. They stopped the four out heaven push. I think it was a little bit of a mistake, though, from Sentinels not breaking the door prior to going in. It was such a telegraphed one-way one -way retake from them. 
Yeah, and this is, this is fantastic because we get to see, you know, Furia off to a good start on their attack. We'll see how their default, how they want to play optimally. But yeah. I say that, I don't get ahead of myself Whoa. here. Of course, we've got the yeah. uh, force coming through from Sentinels. Yeah, look how far Fury is off the chokes, Dan. It's like they know that, that Sentinels isn't afraid to invest into these rounds. But on this round, it looks like only Tens has really bought a Marshall. Everyone else just keeping the classic sick with the Frenzy in hand. And now we have the drone clearing out B main. And if you pay attention here, Fury has left too near A, right? Just in case they need to roll off, quickly go to the A site if there is a B stack on this eco. Now, unfortunately for them, it's not a B stack, and they haven't sold this fake at all so far. So these A players are going to have to do a little bit of prodding, Dan. Yeah, and this, this pacing is an interesting one because you've got to be careful not to shoot yourself in the foot by just running out of time when you're playing the anti-eco here. And I do fear for... Furia in this position. But it looks like they're, they are repositioned. They're repositioning this B site, so they're blindly going to go with a B hit here. I'm sure the Sova's recon has charged up. There it is. Yep. And he's going to shoot that probably into the site any second now. That'll give a ton of information. The site's empty. This is going to be a free take, Dan. And I'm curious, is Sentinel's going to go for the frags into the site, or are they going to try to box them in, get some exits, and do some economic damage? Yeah, I feel, especially as they are Sentinels, that they would want to try to take some fights here. And they're actually all gathering towards spawn. So it's feeling more committed as opposed to boxing them in here. All five players coming through spawn in towards that B site. How many will they be able to find here? Of course, there is another nebula that, there that is blocking vision. So Zan will get a freebie through the smoke as Dapper falls. So it's looking quite labored and yeah. not really seeing all that much promise here so far for Sentinels in this one. There we go, Sick finally able to get a little bit of damage, but just one frag so far. And in fact, Fury are happy to go for the challenges. Losing two players now, but as you say, Sean, this is really what they were looking for here, Sentinels. This Tens gets another opportunity, but of course the shutdown is through, and that's the 2-0 opening here for Fury as we move into their, into their third round. Yeah, and the, it's the little things, right? The Jet Bladestorm adding an extra orb in this patch relative to previous tournaments that we've seen Tens play. If he got one Marshall kill right there, Dan, all he would need in this round is one frag and then his death, and then we had a Bladestorm in the following round. That's not the case right now. So he's far off of Bladestorm. And if you look here, he doesn't have a great buy. Going into the first gun, I think that's a Guardian in his hands with a bunch of Phantoms out, so no Operator in play yet. Yeah, and you can see that Furia have not really invested here either. Kept what they had, just shoring it up with a couple of sheriffs. Mid presence here for Furia. They do like to put pressure on this mid position and to deny the attackers from, or rather, sorry, the other way around. Furia likes to deny the defenders mid control. And you see in this run in particular, Mars is just going to walk up with the sheriff by himself. Yeah, and yet, yet again, Dan, look, if the Sentinels gave up a main control, they're playing in the blind here. They're stacking three to the A site because they have no info. So if you look over at this B site, Shaz is here all alone. He does have the cheese Odin spam yep. ready to go, though. Damn, this, oh, could, no. this could get ugly. Oh, I'm so afraid. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so afraid for Fury. <laughs> and there it comes, but looks like he'll pull off of it. They are too deep, so nothing from the Odin. So the first hurdle has been passed there for Furia, but still looking to make their way forward. They've managed to get a full position on the next hand with that jet dashing in, and now the rest of them starting to file into the site, and great headshots coming through off of this Sheriff's, no less. And that's a huge opening into the site. Spike planted. Oh, Sentinel's in a very difficult retake here, Dan. 2 on 4 but the trade frags come in. Brings it down to a 2 on 3 Both players from Sentinel's far off their ults. Turret spot sick on the way in. And this will probably allow them to reset. They might they might have to save, Dan. Yeah, not looking good here, but you can see Dapper's looking for some amount of damage. And he's gonna bait somebody out, and there we go. Kalil will give him what he wants, and a beautiful cleanup coming through from Furia. Three players surviving. Kalil's even picked up the Odin. Sean. Oof. Yes. Sentinels is going to the Brazilian barbecue, Dan, and they are on the menu right now. <laughs> this is not looking good for the boys. Ah, man, losing the bonus early, I constantly am preaching about this. Those bonus rounds are pivotal if you're a pro team. Losing them early on in the games can cause things to snowball out of control. The yep. alt economy will build for your enemies, and their economy is going to build with that. So you're you're really in the hole now if you're a Sentinels player. Yeah, you can see in this particular round, they'll be looking for some early openings around Catwalk. They've got a set up there. They're leaving Shazam alone towards that B site. 
has some Cypher Util from Dapper to help him, but otherwise it's a stack towards this B site, and they would be correct here, because here comes the push from Sent uh, from Furia into the A site. Wow, x had absolutely oh, oh, oh. no fear whatsoever, able to convert, taking Rafter's control just briefly. Caution here. And, uh, Spike still needs to go down here. This is looking a little bit scary with the pressure from Sentinels coming through, but you can see that Fury are slowing it down. They've got the weaponry advantage, the utility advantage. They're playing it as disciplined as they can. Yeah, and they're, they're going to sit on these ults too. They're going to build them like I was saying. You know, they, that's going to make their following rounds so much more easy. Oh, what? Zand spraying blindly through the smoke as the door breaks. Takes out it. sick. Man, he's he's definitely been the most impactful duelist in this server so far. Dan. Yes. That's not what you want to see if you're a Sentinels fan. Those are, I mean, of course, the, the the frag doesn't really mean much in the scheme of things for the round as we see it cleared up by Furia. But those are nice ones to get because you yes. feel you feel awesome when you get those. And as you're talking about building up the confidence for the for the duelist is always important. So the question here now is how does Sentinels answer back? Do they get the operator on tens? How do they get him more involved in the game? And yeah, I think I just saw it right there. He has the Operator in hand. They're still going to keep Shaz in this B site, most likely. And we're still probably going to see, you know, Zoms over here at A main. But I would really like to see Sentinels fight for A main for once. Yeah, and one thing we have to be cautious about, well, Sentinels should be, is these fast plays from Furia. Fast A-B splits. We'll get the drone likely going up mid as well. They like to make sure that they can clear that position, keep the pressure on the defense by taking mid away. So the drone goes up early on here for Furia. And it broke Tens. the trip, Dan. It broke the trip for Mazen, so he's now lurking mid with no trip there. But here goes Tens. He's looking for information. I think he's had a step. Oh, there's the dash. Oh, my God. Able to get out of there. Cosmic Divide comes through. A delayed exec onto this B site. Oh, what a shot there from Exad. And it is beautiful early on here from Furia. They have oh. come to play. That is so sick, Dan. Oh man, this is insane. What a round from Furia. They completely demolished Sentinels with just pure class and skill. Prime gaming flawless nonetheless, and not a singer, single Brazilian player falls in that round. Argentinian as well. Uh, it, it, they look incredible. Tens had a sitter though, right there. That's one we yeah. expect Tens to hit. Maybe the nerves come into him, opening match, a little rusty but they need yeah. Tens to perform. This is a team that heavily relies on one player to perform, and we've grown, we've just come to expect it now at this point. Yeah, and it's really smart too, because Furia were representing a slow default, and yes. they were ready to just pounce on an info gathering play like we just saw. They got lucky that time Furia that Tens was there in that particular instance, but back to the anti-eco, we've got Sheriffs on board here for Sentinels on the defense. The pressure comes through towards A-Main already. Zand, oh, it's just beautiful movement. He's making this look incredible so far on this jet. And I am just afraid for Sentinels watching him, his POV at the moment. And after that initial pressure, we'll have Dapper clearing the B side of the map. So, I mean, Sentinels, they have the information, but what do they do with it? Tens is on that blade storm, and you just have to you get a sense of how key he is in this in a round like this. Yeah, and again, Fury is making the perfect rotation. You mentioned they're falling back to D to B. Dapper has pushed through mid, and Shaz has actually reclaimed the B site. So this is the rotation Sentinels needed, but it's still it's pretty run. much all on Shazam. Yeah, Dapper would have had the footsteps, I believe, in spawn as they were running. Oh, the rotation's coming in, Dan. Look, Tens is entering this B site right now. It is really on Tens here with the Blaze Storm. And there we go. Great shots coming through from Tens. The utility to slow things down. They can't refract this. They have 30 seconds to try to recover. And they can't go to B. They've got to quickly abort, but straight into Dapper. They've been fed into the machine. And here he goes. There's one for Dapper looking for the next one with the Sheriff. It's patient, but it's Tens from mid with the Blaze Storm to capitalize. And that is how you answer back. Great stuff from Sentinels. And I love I love Dapper's position in mid. Yeah, veteran play there coming out of Dapper on the Sentinel roll, nonetheless on Sentinels. He pushes through mid, and you mentioned it. I think he heard the attackers running through their spawn right there on the way to B. So the lockdown isn't respected in the slightest. That allowed them to have three players in the B site with Dapper containing them in mid on an A a fake, Dan. Like that's that's insane from Sentinels, but it's all made from Dapper playing that situation perfectly. Absolutely. Sets tens up on the position and we'll see more aggression in mid early here for Sentinels. Just trying to contest this because I think they know that 
ultimately, ultimately they'll rotate out of this position, most likely. Oh, they're going back. Down. You're right, Sean. Just as I say that. This is insane. Drone wars. <laughs> the drone wars. And it's furious you pick up the opening kill there. Tens goes down. That's a huge pick off. Immediately. Oh, a second. I don't think Sick knew anything about that angle there. And early five versus three in favor of Fury. Oh, yeah, and the Seekers are out of the play too. Not much to work with on Cloud9 right here. Shaz, you know, no utility remaining. The Recon's still charging. One frag, though, and the Hunter's Fury can come on. That could change the round. And Fury's just waiting for a mistake to be made right now. They're just chilling in mid, and this is eventually going to be a mid-B split. Yeah, and there's a little bit of information there with that turret damage coming through, and the collapse onto the B site now for Furia. Dapper in the back of the site. He's good, but can he be this good? Got players from both angles. It's a nice initial kill onto Exan. Can he find any more? Dapper doing huge damage. It's only the two, though, but maybe that's enough. Left. Spike will go down the rotation already through spawn here from Shazam and Zoms. Certainly a chance for them. We don't have a recon just yet, though, from Shazam. Doesn't look like they want to wait for it. They're going straight for the peaks. Shazam, very threatening there. NZR in the boathouse, trying to keep himself alive. Shazam making it happen. Whilst it goes down, Zoms takes down one more. It's up to NZR. In the one versus two, they're looking for him. They know he's at backside. Oh my goodness, Sentinels. I have no wow. idea how they handled that so well. It's It all started with Dapper, just nesting in the back of sight like that, using his cages to perfection, using Zoms' nebulas as well to hold the stairs. Honestly, those three remaining players from Sentinels might have kept them in this game, Dan, because things would have spiraled out of control with that round. Yes, yeah, that was beautiful. It really was. And that's the kind of stuff that Sentinels brings to the table. You know, you put yes. someone with their back against the wall, they're always going to do a little bit more damage than maybe you expect. And that's one of the things you have to worry about. But it's a buy for both teams here, Sean. It looks like Sentinels is done trying the super aggressive mid stuff. This is just a base setup. Tens will fight mid. But, I mean, you can see they're just 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one split all across the map right now on Sentinels. So it's not going to be any kind of coordinated aggression here. Oh, we have a cat push coming in just just to get some information, a bit of pressure. But we've got four ultimates online here for Sentinels, so they can play retake so effectively. The Cosmic Divide, the Hunter's Fury, the Seekers, they have so much to work with in that sense. So I feel like it does allow them to oh, play the, the drone missed tens. The drone missed tens, Dan. I couldn't agree more with what you said, but this drone, <laughs> I think they, they believe tens isn't in mid. They are wrong, though, as he has shown. That's a problem, and there's the follow-up. Shazam knows they're trying to shuffle up because of the information that Ten's got. And Shazam probably saw that off of the minimap. And you can see NZR is trying to pressure into the A site now, but it's it's certainly a desperate recovery attempt now for Fury. Oh my god, they're going to drop down the Cosmic Divide. That's going to make life more difficult. They can't even get in here. And that's a spike that's just down in front of them. Four Sentinels is just full control right now. It's really just not fair, Dan, when you have to run through a cosmic divide into a smoke, into left. a gravity well, you know, just one agent. It's interesting, you. though, Sean, because I feel like that's a lot of respect that Sentinels yeah. are giving Furia to use the cosmic yes. divide because they had quite a big ultimate lead. And they're like, we're just we are just going to guarantee that we win this yes. round no matter what. The, they needed to guarantee not only that they won this round, though, Dan, they needed to do Ten it seconds cleanly, left. right? And right now, no one has died on their team. They're looking at a prime gaming flawless, but it's, they need to build an economy if they want to come back in this game, and this is a start. Yeah, certainly is, and, and that's the thing too, you know, Sentinel's looking amazing right now, which is great to see for a Sentinel's fan, especially after what was a very scary run of five rounds from Furia. And, but at the same time, Furious, they, they still have five rounds. If they don't only get one more round in the half, that's still like a good half for Furia. So lots of work for Sentinel's to continue to do, and, it's going to be interesting to see how that shapes up now as we have another buy rounds for both teams. Yeah, and Tense is on this B site with the Operator. Dapper here as well. Shaz on the rotate into mid. So they've moved Tens around, and I think they have the right read. Cam in the window early from Dapper gives some info that this is more than just a B default. Yeah, I, that, that spot there, I think that kind of blew up this opening for Furia. They're just holding position now, looking for a response in mid. There goes that drone. We saw that before. They've done this before. They drone mid, and then they delay push, delay exec into the B site. 
but the counter drone from Shazam gives all the info to him. No one is in mid, and he knows that. Look, he's rolling into the B site. They're going to have a three stack here before a frag even goes down. Oh, the bait set up, though. Dapper's got to get something, but <gasps> nothing. He gets absolutely nothing, and the same story for Tens, and that's a free B site now. Here coming through for Furia and Sentinels. They're in a lot of trouble here. I'm not sure exactly how their money is at the moment, but this is a scary position to be in. They've only got the Seekers for the retake. Sick with the pickup onto Khalil, trying to set up in a forward position. We have a long rotation around from B main, coming through from QCK, looking for the, the craziest of timings. It really could be insane too, Dan, because he has the res, and if both of these central players end up in the site, that could come into play. One there we go. <laughs> there it is, coming into play. Shazam will take down QTK. There's two players left here for Shazam to try to find, but he's on Sova. This will be difficult here for Shazam. No util to aid him, and there's the peak coming through from NZR. They'll finish off the round. Sentinels made it look scary at the end, but... Wow, that's a, that's a crazy one for Sentinels to, to lose out on. Yeah, that, that looked rough, right? Because they had all of the information. All of the cards were visible to them there, right? They had the right reads. But again, the star player on the team, Intense, has that first shot, and it's just not landing right now. Which is crazy, because right, I was yeah. looking at his ACS before that round. It was 233. Yeah. XAN's average ACS in the last 90, 90 days on right, a jet yeah. only is 230. Like, this is a bad game for Tens. That's how much of a star player he typically is. And you can see Tens this time going for that early aim in aggression, but we get yeah. great util coming through from Furia in that early setup to win that Take early point. control. They pick up the orb as well. So early victories here for, for them, and they've... Oh, oh, never mind. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> the rotation through to B here for Furia as well. But that's the lockdown gone, and that's a huge problem. Yeah. Shaz knows this player's here. He broke the cam, and now the recon has not pinged him. That means Shaz knows this guy's aggressive. Mazin's aggressive in B main. The res is definitely coming in here. We're going to have a 5v5, Dan, and it's definitely ending in this B site. The wall's going to go up. Is Shaz going to be ready for this? Yeah, that's a good question. Getting that lockdown back in play. There's the wall, the boost here for Exan looking for it. There's the res on Khalil, so that will enable them to use a lockdown. But they're actually not going into the B side. They're going back into mid right now to catch the rotation from Catwalk. But there is no rotation just yet. Sentinels starting to put the pieces together. The ISO comes in to slow things down. There's 30 seconds on the clock. How much damage does Sick get here? Nothing. Better angle for NZR as they now spill through the tree position into Tenz's his crosshair. And he's slowing things down. They can't afford to lose this time. They need, they've got 50. 15 seconds to plant this spike, and I don't know how they get onto the side. They're coming through, but Ten's still locking things down. Cloud burst up high as he goes to the reposition, and he's got Zoms to fall back on as well. Zoms, so it's just, just going to be on Ten's shoulders, but looks like that is a steady that pair of hands. But ended. finally, he'll go down, but he's done no enough time, here. Dan. He's done enough. No time exactly for them to plant Clutch. this spike. Oh, wow. Wow. They just got bailed out big time from their Yelling Star Intense. And what a time for him to come yeah. up big, right? Every time it seems like Sentinels is on the verge of literally losing this map, right? They are falling far, very, very far behind right now on the defensive side of Ascent. Tense has bailed them out, right? Even in this kind of average game from him, the Bladestorm round and now this round, massive impact coming his way. I think Fury has done such a good job of switching up the sights. And I actually thought this was a great read, catching Sick on yeah. Catwalk there. It's just easiest. the trade. Yeah, the trading wasn't there. Yeah, I was going to say, easiest Red Bull clutch of Shazam's life. Wasn't yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Walking in. Yeah, win by time. We've got that once again into that mid presence. You up this from Sentinels, keeping the pressure on, forcing Util to be used to push them off of these early positions. You see it. Sentinels doesn't really understand what's on. They're, they're running back towards their spawn. They're breaking the turret in mid. Yeah, Shaz is repositioning now into this B site. He's going to go you know, up on that platform. Maybe get ready to spam here. Ahead. Still has the Odin. Out of charges. Yeah, Khalil has that lockdown that they were going to use or were thinking to use for that previous round. So it Ooh. seems like they, they want to get the lockdown Damn. play in again. 
that was an interesting little chance. Chaz just used a shock dart. And like you said, this lockdown's here. It's not going to get broken. Oh, I think Chaz has been tagging. Yep, he'll go down. That's a big Hunter's Fury coming through there from Fury, but still have Dapper in position. Can they take down Dapper? They can't get past the angle just yet. Exander at the back is looking to do all of the damage. He'll take out Dapper. That will unlock his other players to get into the site for the take and for that spike plant. But 30 seconds left. Tens is ever dangerous. He looks for a timing. There's a swing from Spawn, and the Cosmic Divide comes through defensively for Fury. Up. Quick flash there from Sick, looking to try to gain some position. Tens will take down one. It's looking quite labored here. But still, ch good chance for Sentinels as they try to wake, uh, make their way forward. Sent, uh, Sick able to take down one more. Oh. And a very desperate push from QCK, trying to find the timing. And that leads it all down to NCR. They know that he's locked out by B main. And here comes the pressure. There goes the defuse. Oh. NCR gets one. Does Sick go for the stick? He tries to go for the spam. He has to run it down. I don't know if he has time. Sick not coming off of that defuse. My wow. god, Sick with nerves of steel. Is going to win that one, and Sentinels pick up the round. The wow, just the jump, Dan. Just the jump to get on that ledge was enough time for Sick to finish the defuse. I thought when he switched to the Phantom, it was the perfect play. He would catch the defuse. Everything was going perfectly, right? Wow. <laughs> that is so lucky. I feel like Sentinels is so lucky right now in this half to have five rounds, Dan. Yeah. They, they just, they need to buy a lotto ticket or something after this game. This is unreal, some of the clutches they have won in this half. And going into the last round of the half, we have not a very good buy coming through from Furia. We'll have to see how they play this one out. Tens will take uh, take out that Blade Storm. See what he can do with it in this final round of the first half. We have, of course, control for A-Main with Furia. And I think Furia have a sense that it's this ca early cat presence once again. They've seen it a couple times here from Sentinels. Spike dropped. Triple setup on a on catwalk. Yeah, and I fight. think at some point this round will probably go to catwalk because every time there's been a, a heavy top mid presence, that's where the strat goes. Yeah, Furia with a slower pace than perhaps you would expect against Sentinels. Dan, I will say the nightmare fuel is that quick walls off this tree position. He's done it before. So they can single off tens and then just leave these two out of the picture and the A side is theirs. That could very well happen right now because we are grouping for a Furia cat hit. Yeah, look, they're, they're looking to set up an info trap here as well with this pause. I think Furia, they're looking to catch Sentinels playing over aggressively, but they're not doing it there. Content with this. Oh my god, that's disgusting from Tens. How does he find a headshot there? Picks Xand out of the sky and now four versus four. More frags from Tens. Oh it absolutely is the Tens show right now. And what does Furia do here? They managed to get the spike planted. However, Tens is still alive, and that is obviously a problem. Here he goes, tries to find the pixel angles with that blade storm, but Marzen will take him down with the Guardian. One versus three, and well, never mind. Sentinels pick up the final round of the first half, and they're going to equalize here, six to six. And let's not forget, we had a 5 0 streak early on from Furia. A 5 0 streak with so many man up scenarios after that, too, right, Dan? It feels like. This is at least an 8 4 half for Furia, but it ends 6 6. Both these teams are tied. And honestly, I don't know what Sentinels has in store because, like I mentioned before the game, we haven't even seen Sick on this roll on attack side of Ascent. Yeah, we, we saw some great stuff from Furia and also from Sentinels. It's feeling like a very great matchup so far, but now it's time to go for, to, uh, for a quick break. So we'll hand it back over to the desk. Thank you very much, gents. Uh, equalizing there, mm -hmm. uh, Sentinels did to bring it to six and six on the first half, uh, putting six of the last seven rounds together in order to get us to that point. But paper thin, I think that's where we got to start. The fact that they were even pushed the way they were, and in a lot of ways, it happened the way you said it should. If you're Fur Furia, rather wants to take this, they've got to bring the fight and they got to bring it early on the attacking side. Yeah, it looked really, really good for them early. It was kind of what I wanted to see: aggression, you know, measured aggression though it's not like they're just kind of you know going at going at it from the word go they're getting a little bit of information they're hitting some good shots they're following up off of each other some great combos with their utilities and then and then all of a sudden the sentinels start to turn it around it's the classic sentinels download you give shaz a few rounds uh, to kind of figure you out and start to look at the you know the ways or the tendencies that the team has and i'm gonna call out round number six the okay. first one they picked up it was an yep. eco round and it's dapper pushing up into mid 
mid yep. to get the positioning, to hear the footsteps on the KJ. Old fake over on A, catching them on the way to B. That's really where it all started to turn around. You don't expect someone that deep. You don't expect anyone to hear you as you're running around. You're like, oh, this A fake, that's so easy. No one's going to tell. We're running around. We should be in. And then all of a sudden, there's multiple defenders waiting there. Like, how could they have known? How could they have read this? None of us knew until you pointed out Paper Thin before. He's like, hang on. I think one of them was pushed up deep. He heard the footsteps. Imagine that's how you lose one of those crucial rounds, and it's very expensive as well. And while it was dapper with the positioning as the rounds went on, it was Tens who was finding the shots. He's top fragging for the team. We called him out at the top of the day. It's It's got to be the superstar. If you're going to take the world championship, this is the guy who needs to perform every step of the way. Yeah, he was a little cold to start. You could tell he was having a little bit of trouble dealing with these coordinated, aggressive pushes, especially on the B side. They move him over to A, they put him in some good positions where he can start getting some frags. He does a nice job in middle. He gets undetected there that one time, gets the free op shot onto Khalil. He's doing a lot of nice stuff. And once he gets that op in his hands, he's so nasty to deal with. Well, he's ma he's oh, map ahead. positioning. I just wanted to point out, we were talking about the turret play there from Fury, and we're like, well, he knows how to just dip dive and dodge around all of those little areas that he doesn't need to be, and he doesn't want to be ca caught out. So I think that's something to show that the map knowledge here, even though Sentinels haven't played this in a while, is still coming out strong. Six to six, we are dead locked even coming out of the first half. We dive into the second half, going back over to DDK and Sean Garris to see how it all plays out. Thank you so much, Dash. Absolutely. What a match so far. Without tens, Sean, without tens, I fear what would have happened to Sentinels in that first half. But they rally it yes. back 6-6 six, six as we swap sides. It's truly the crown jewel of NA after that half, right? But look at this. Oh, my goodness, Dan. We have a mid-collapse from Furia and mid-gathering at top mid from Sentinels. There's going to be a bloodbath. And we get a trade on to you. Mr. Ten straight away, but here comes Exat down cat, and he looks like he's hungry to push the issue all the way. The dash is able to help him survive, and backing away is difficult. It does have support here, but that cage from Dapper enabled him to isolate Exan there. So that's just Dapper with those cipher things. But still, three versus three on the reset with over a minute to go. Sentinels have plenty of time to figure this one out. Dan, is that an Astro with a sheriff on a pistol round? Mazin, you damn is such a Chad. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Central's regrouping for the A hit here. And this is actually a great setup from Fury. They have the Sage in the site, QCK making first contact. And I mentioned Mazen on Catwalk. He's going to be quick there to rotate. QCK. Oh, that's some good tagging. Mazen unable to find the finishing blows, though. And QCK, unfortunately for Fury, goes down very quickly on the site. I don't believe they broke the door, actually. So this will be pretty easy. And Telegraph, they're just going to swing to win here, Furia. And this is very, very tough. All these peeps coming through. There's just one left, though. But a huge health advantage for Zoms. Oh. And Marzin, oh Ooh. my goodness! He somehow finds that one with the headshot. Unbelievable. Zoms had so many advantages, Sean. Oh my goodness. He had the frenzy, too, Dan. All he needed to do was connect a bullet or two. But that Chad Sheriff, it comes up so big. You called Mazen. him. That's incredible that he clutches that round. Fury has both pistols in this game, Dan. Look at and that they are a, They are a live dog right now in this matchup. They Absolutely. look like they could take this. Yeah, it's, it is sometimes hard to beat the Brazilian confidence, the Brazilian fire, the passion. Yes. We both knew it's, it, it's coming. It's co Eventually, this scene is going to be incredible and just demolish everyone. Yep. It's coming. Absolutely. One of these tournaments. And hey, I mean, that that, <laughs> that shop shooting with the Sheriff from Mars uh, may have been the, the reason for the tag pause here. Um, yes, I would probably break a monitor. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, this is this is crazy. I mean, as we were discussing previously, we have more of a moment to uh, go into some of these details here. We do have uh, changes for some changes for Sentinels. You know, the, there are the rumors that Shaz will be on Sova pretty much predominantly, in fact. I think all except Split, where yeah. he might be playing Sky. And so that's, that's one big change. And we haven't seen much data on this team, so it's hard to know where they're at, even though they're such a, a top dog. Yeah, it's one of those things where Shaz always played a little bit of Sova, right? Never 
a lot before Tens joined the team, right? He was always playing Jet. He even dabbled with a little bit of Reyna before Tens joined the team. But ever since Tens joined, he's recognized the fact that he's the in-game leader. He has this star player, this special player on his team that should be on the star duelist role. Shaz, you know, selflessly gave that up, and he's now taken on the silver role. And he's way behind as far as practice goes compared to the other servers, but I think he does a great job of finding new arrows and, you know, making sure he's getting the alt economy going like a lot of the other top servers are doing in the scene. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's, I'm looking forward to seeing how it how it starts to flow as they get deeper into yes. the tournament, because I think that, I mean, that's at least the assumption I think most of us have. There's going to be a lot of games that we should probably be seeing from Sentinels, but getting back into the game a little bit and talking somewhat about Furia. Sure. They've got the Sage, and we've seen that the Sage Catwall and defense come yes. in vogue. And so that's going to be, I think, a point of contention that should be quite interesting and dynamic yeah. that I'm looking forward to here for this matchup. Is yeah. there any points around that that you think is particularly interesting for you? Yeah, I'm literally smiling because I was thinking about the Sage right now. I was thinking about all the innovative things that they did on the attack side, right? I say innovative lightly. We've seen all these things before, but the wall at Tree, where you know, QCK was able to peek over that, get the frag at Window. The wall at A Main, where peeking over the Nebula at A Main, gets the frag onto Raptors. There's so many of these little quirky walls that gifted frags to either him or his teammates, the one in B Main. How, how are we going to see that happen on defense right now? Because now, you know, he can control the flow of a round. So I guarantee you there's a lot of trick walls we have coming our way. But right now we have a super heavy mid setup with three players, one that we mentioned, that Sage, and an alarm bot between them. Yes, and we don't have a drone from Shazam around market, so I don't think we're going to see that kind of drone take. They're all grouped up, though, looking to go together, I would imagine. But Furia, as you noted, a lot of mid presence. Aren't the team spotting anything just yet? Both teams wanting to see what the other team is going to do in terms of first action. Yeah, this this is a, a terrifying setup, actually. I, I would be willing to bet this is a bit of a counter. Maybe Furia has a read that Sentinels likes to clear out mid on these rounds and then go into a site hit, right? Trying to pull a rotation to mid. They like to break this alarm bot, and that's why they put the alarm bot in the middle. It's yeah. a bait. They're trying to actually force Sentinels into this bait setup. And the last thing you want to do against Sentinels in a round like this, where you've picked up that pistol, is is give them the opportunity to pop off with the Marshal or the Sheriff, you know, give them that long-range damage. That's how they get into this round. So you can see that's being completely denied. A mid-round, or even late-round, drone comes through. That gives a lot of information to Furia to help them understand how to position. But with that said, rotation is looking like it's coming here for Sentinels through to Cat. What a read, too, because if you look at this, the Astra is solo in A Raptors. Left. This site is definitely going to be lost. The plant will certainly go down. And there's going to be a five on five retake, Dan. Yeah, and I mean, there should be a lot of close range engagements for those SMGs to really pay off. But Mars actually a ahead of the Nebula here, looking to find some early damage. Knows where the spike's being planted. Can pull up a gen plant. There's a whiff, though. Or did he get to actually? No, he got tagged. Who am I kidding? It's tens, of course. You can see the pressure coming through now as they set up the retake. Oh, that's a huge wall, and that is going to trigger four kills in quick succession from Furia. And there's no response because there's a big fat wall in the way. Zops, though, finding his time. They don't know where he is, but there are plenty of players to cover every eventuality. What a setup from Furia. What a setup. It's actually incredible. The walls from QCK have won so many rounds for Furia. This Sage has been pivotal to the success, and that's something you rarely say when you watch these pro games of Valorant. The Sage just seems to be a support player. They do a little bit of here, a little bit of there. This is like very impactful walls we're seeing out of QCK in this match. And it gives them that prime gaming flawless. And that's so important. We also saw Furia uh, capitalizing quite well off of the first pistol uh, in the first half as well, and just playing out these anti-ecos really effectively. That's always a very good sign as we go into this next round. And look at the difference here. So Mazin as an Astra, unlike Zombs, is aggressively peeking into A main, right? He has this info. He's forcing people to take this line from him with abilities. So that's a piece of utility. Sentinels, Sentinels will need to expend to push him off that angle, to force more of a rotate into this A site, because otherwise we're still dealing with the triangle setup on mid. Trailblazer coming through into mid to spot information, but that gets shut down. So not a lot of info 
garnered from that one. Here comes the clearance. That's a fantastic shock, dog. There's that defensive reaction with the ice orb. Exan able to get out of position as well. So a minute left, and this is good information, good clearance of utility from Sentinel so far. Yeah, this is a great job by Sentinels. They've completely broken up that mid setup, and they've wasted all the utility on those players. But now they're going right into the stack, Dan. And oh, but Mars unable to take down Tens. You knew that he had a weak opponent, but it doesn't seem to matter too much. Sentinels doing a great job in dealing the damage. They're going to have a spike plan here, but still two players left alive. Spectres, though, for Khalil and then ZR on the retake. And I believe the door is down, so they only have to look at Rafters right now. Sentinels have all the information. That's some quick information there. Seeing, hearing who shot the dart as it came through. As they edge their way forward, but lacking health, lacking utility. Need that first kill, and it's not going to be given. It's six first kill instead, and the second for the triple. And Sentinels, beautiful round, really. Yes. Such a great mid round to late round play. Uh, it's crazy, Dan, because they actually got outplayed on this round by Fury. We saw that same 1-3-1 one, one setup. One on A, three in mid, one on B, right? And Sentinels prodded into mid so slowly. They worked their way into that triangle setup. They wasted all that utility. But Furia, it's almost as if they knew that once they got pushed off, Sentinels would go into the A hit. They were trying to pull them off of the A site. And Furia read that perfectly. They stacked A ahead of time. Well, we have Xan now on the operator for the first time here on the defensive side, looking to gain control around mid. Ooh, his arm's going to peek. His arm's... Oh, got to be careful. <laughs> That's going to take... Oh, actually, Xan gets attacked by the drone as well. And then, Oh, look how quick they are behind that. Straight up into market with the Seekers. Sick, looking for the entries. <gasps> Catches Khalil without the gun in hand. They're so quick. Xan, though, still on the site. Still with the Operator. Ra rotation's coming in, and they're trying to slow this one down. Fury oh are trying to slow God. it down, and the Cosmic Divide, that might slow it down enough to allow the Rotation to come in to help. Reaction, though. Either that or it's created a prison for these B players, Dan, because now they're trapped behind their own Cosmic Divide. Yeah, not a good look, and you know that they are completely boxed in, so there yes. goes the spike all the way to the A site. So... You like the idea, well, I, the idea is cool for the reactive Spike cosmic divide to buy time, but after those two kills and spawn from Sentinels, it just fell apart. But can they keep the operator alive? That's the mission right now, but Zan walks straight into it. They, they were never letting him out of that cage. Dear God, Dan, the amount of utility that hit x hand that round was incredible. <laughs> it was insane. He got hit by what? A trail... I'm going in reverse here. A trailblazer, a Nova Pulse, a Gravity Well, a Seeker. Got tagged by the drone as well. Tagged by the drone as well. I mean, what a round. The initiators just tore this man up. Yeah, the timing was so What's fast key? from Sentinels. They, they just... You could see that they were caught completely off guard. Khalil just hold, holding util by, uh, by the the boathouse there is so yeah really problematic but 8-8 eight, eight, we're all tied up and it will be an eco for furia that I'm round broke their economy and we've got a fast b movement from sentinels and speaking of catching people off guard actually it looks like zap out of timing Ooh. oh no khalil finds one as well they can't capitalize sick tries to trade khalil Ooh, the cloud burst in how dare he that Two is crazy. on four now in Furious' favor. Now they don't have a lot of guns to work with, but Khalil has, you know, he's farmed this lockdown. Absolutely bodacious plays from Fury on the defense now. Sentinels have to recover that spike. They've got no other options. I mean, I don't even know what you do if you're Sentinels right now. They have to get a frag. Maybe Shaz can pop a blind Hunter's Fury, or maybe he can get a little bit of info. Managed to grab it at least. It's 50 seconds. I mean, the problem is that Furia, they have to assume that Furia has pushed yes. other parts of the map. Yeah, but the first mission here in this type of scenario, Dan, is get the spike with a lot of time on the clock. And the reason being is you you have to allow that seed of doubt to form in the defense's mind. They have to think that you fell back. And that's just not happening because, as you mentioned, the Furia's top. Well, the actual top mid, but the frags are all going Sentinel's way. They've actually now, they forced their way into advantage now. This is, officially, they have advantage now. Two versus two, better weapons on the after plant. Here comes QCK. The cheeky shot's not working out for him or his teammates, but Marzen could perhaps change the story. Or maybe not, it's been spotted now, so 
This is very tough. However, Shazam is one bullet away, but is he ever peeking? He doesn't have to. He's playing a setup that his Zombs will take first contact and then Shazam can peek. It's a simple tried and tested setup and Ooh. Zombs is going to absolutely destroy Marzin. What a recovery. Was that two versus four? I think it was. It was indeed a, a two on four. Another no scenario where Furia has an advantage of players and they're not playing those situations correctly. They have very, very good early round setups, utility traps. But once Sentinel slows Consume down it. these mid rounds, it gets Enemy them remaining. to make you know, decisions without their utility, decisions without a plan ahead of time. Sentinels has come up big in all of those scenarios so far. Yeah, a team with unlimited clutch. But we have the operator back in hand for Exant. He's looking for that mid jump peak. And he will get tagged, unfortunately, and unable to hold that position any longer. And in the meantime, Sentinel's taking some space towards B main. If we win A main control, once again, Trailblazer goes down, looking for info outside of B main into the B side. There's was, that cat wall as well. Yeah, and Sentinels has yeah. taken B main. They're trying to force the Sova to rotate over to B to help out Killjoy. They've done that. They have done their goal, and now they will go back to A main and try to take this engagement. Ooh. This is a very dangerous situation for Mazin because of the, all of this initiator utility. And with that wall still up, it gives Fury an easy understanding that they don't have to look no towards Cat just yet. Run. Here comes out Hunter's Fury to flash as well to Marzen, but he's totally fine. Dodges the Hunter's Fury. Very nice. Seekers come through from Sentinels to try to entry into the site here. And it looks like they may be to push things back, but there's Exan. Oh, he doesn't get one. That's crazy. Very unfortunate there for Exan and Furia. The Sentinels start to spill into the site, and there goes the spike planting as well. And they've got a great hold here. This is going to take a lot from Furia, but Enemy they are remaining. just losing absolutely everybody. Ooh. Look at Shazam go, and Sentinels will shut it down. And that was a that's a huge round to win. That's where you want to see Furia come back into it. Yeah, and that's just one of those classic veteran rounds, right? You can feel it all throughout the round. The trip is set up over at A. They're trying to fight a little bit for mid control, but they're really, really pushing back B main. They're fighting for the orb. They're trying to filter rotations into this B site. And once they feel like you don't have the info at B and they've almost forced in their minds a theoretical second player B, they're going to hit A. And they, they did. They used both of the initiator alts. The Hunter, Hunter's Fury comes out, takes out quick. The Seekers come out, find Mazen. And the site just falls so quickly at that point. That was a fantastic round by Sentinels. Yeah, it truly was. I mean, we're seeing a lot of great stuff from Furia, but certainly the experience of Sentinels is shining through at the moment. And I think for the sake of context, it is worth mentioning that for Furia to have a solid chance of winning this series, their best chance, they have to win the first map. Going into the second map, you would have them at a big disadvantage as in general. You know, we see that permaban being bind, but Breeze is a map that they don't tend to play too much in general. So this is certainly going to be a better look for them than their average Breeze game. Yes. So we'll have to see what happens when we get to Breeze. But from what we know and understand yeah. right now, there's a lot of pressure on this one for them. Exactly. I hate to look ahead, but yeah, like you mentioned, they haven't played Breeze since I think it was August. It's been a long time. So we still have a lot of rounds here to play, though. 10 8 Sentinels in the lead, but they finally have this economic advantage, the round advantage, and you have to feel like all of the momentum has shifted into their favor at this point. Totally agree with you. And so do quite well off of these pistols previously. Let's see if they can do it again, although they can close that one. Oh, well, Sentinels. I was going to say they're playing that kind of very passive anti eco <laughs> setup in the early round. And there we go, we get a catch. Marzi goes down towards A main. And this stand is just this is what happens when you run a Who's default, defeat? right? And what I mean by that is Zomps has done this every round. He's played super passive around A. I even pointed out earlier, he gave up A main control, right? Mazin's kind of wondering in the back of his head, can I just push through this? Is anyone here? I mean, you would hate to go through the whole match and have there be no one there when you look back at the VOD. So he tests it out here, gets burned, and now look at this three on five. Chat runs. Wow. What? He just doesn't give a damn. Spike planted. Doesn't give a damn, Shazam. The man through the smoke, but it's it's going to be tough to get some damage from this one. Sentinels, you know, they, they saw the Brazilian 
some confidence and they're meeting it with some of their own. It's a nice little frag at the end of it. And if we're going to get a comeback from Furia, well, we've got four ultimates. They're ahead on the ultimate economy. And so if it's going to happen, it has to be now. Sentinel's on 11. This is now Furia's best chance to get back into this ascent. Yeah, and I think they really need Xan to come up big. He had a lot of key moments in that first half where he was creating space, getting some first bloods on some of those rounds in the first half, but he has been absent in this second half. He's having some of the same struggles we saw Tens have. But I will give credit to Sentinels. Their initiators and the utility they have used across the map has has helped that tremendously. Yeah, we can see that. We've got Sage there, QCK in market. Three players here, quick to a response on the defense for Furia. Oh, that's in a, Sand is in a dirty position. Oh, they'll shoot out the Trailblazer for him so he can get the pick on the Dapper. Beautiful early setup there from Furia. There goes that wall in mid. What does that tell Sentinels? They're starting to rotate very quickly to Catwalk. Yeah, what it tells them is that Sage was mid. She wants to rotate as quick as possible to B to help the teammates out. So they know three people are B. They're trying to quickly come into this A site. There's the tree smoke going down. Two by A main. Getting slowed down, Dan. Yeah, the Hunter's Fury comes in too, trying to catch them going through toward tree, but 50 seconds, there's actually a lot of time for Sentinel still. They walk through. Oh, the angle from Kalil is great. And Marsden's there to back it up. It's tense on the other side of it, though. And it's just tens and Zoms. They're split. One A main, one catwalk, and time is against them now. 40 seconds to go. A full rotation from the defense of Fury on this A site. They don't have to give anything here. They can force Sentinels to go deep, but Xan. Wants to take control of this left. one. But there's still Tens. And he has a Blade Storm. Again, not much time there. Tens needs to get the action. And they're going to give it to him. And he's going to get caught by NCR. Beautiful finish there from Furia. We said they had to win the round. They do so only expending one of their ultimates. So yes. they're still in good stead moving forward. Four people alive. The oper operator remains in Xan's hands. Uh, that is the perfect round if you're looking for Fury to win this game. Sentinels has a lot of money to work with though, Dan. They're gonna be able to buy this round and potentially another round after this due to the Blade Storm on tens. So Fury has their work cut out, to, out for them right now. They're going to need to string together rounds and Sentinels, they're spreading out in this base default and Exxon's gonna get aggressive on B again. Can he find anything? Oh, oh. we know the Dapper wants to do it. Waiting, waiting, as long as he could, hoping the Dapper would peek behind that Trailblazer, but no. Dapper knows better. And there goes the drone. And Dapper's going to try to deal with that one. Everybody else evacuates, and we'll get a fast rotation from Sentinels towards A-Main. A-Main has been Marsden's territory, and they'll hear the pickup of the ultimate orb. Yeah, and meanwhile, QCK has taken control of B-Main, walled, and is on the wall. All of the info, Dan, the stack is coming into A right now. This is going to be a tough one. The Cosmic Divide will block off that Rafter's position. That will commit players from Fury to drop through. And you can see the Sentinels are beyond the angle. They're able to defend, but the lineup Ooh. comes through. But Marsden only able to find one from that one. And now Furia. They're in so much trouble here. They're in so much trouble. Do they try to commit the weapons into this one? Will they have enough for another operator? I don't know. They need an argument to go forward. They need somebody to give them something for them to want to commit their entire weaponry into this site. But I don't think that's happening right now, Sean. Oh no, with Dapper in this corner right now, are they gonna clear this? They, he peeks out. That's the info, Dan. This might be the in that you were talking about. Oh, looking for the angle, but if there's a man that knows his angles, it's Dapper. Trying to tease him out here, but he's so patient. And just continuation <laughs> spray. He expects a trade fragger to come one forward. And remaining. They are committing at least one extra, well, two extra guns there. Xan will escape with that operator, but 12 rounds for Sentinels coming up. Yeah, and I mean, not many teams in Valorant have come back against the leading Sentinels team, Dan. This yes. is this is a graveyard of losers. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, not many teams successful when Sentinels hits this 12th round. So Furia has their work cut out for them, but you mentioned it before, they have some ults to work with. The res is there, the Bladestorm is there, they have an operator, the lockdown's there, the cosmic device there. They have so many things to work with, right? Yes. So three rounds is not out of the question. This is not an impossible comeback for Furia right here. And they have the alarm bot deeper into mid now. That tells me Furia isn't going to play aggressive here this round. And they swap Sage QCK back to A main as well. So they move QCK around a lot. Looking for aggressive A main control. He could find Zombs here. 
And Tatsuri gets unleashed. It's a blind all onto the Killjoy connector, and she dodges everything. Zom's getting pushed A main. There's a trip protecting him, but he's out. This is a fast mid B split, Dan. Yeah, I'm absolutely. That wall on A main means way. nothing, and it's going to be all down to NZR trying to defend, trying to get ahead of this one. Tens is around the corner of that blade store, but it comes X out as well, <gasps> and trying to capitalize, just use some element of surprise to his advantage, but jet diffed by Tens. Marzen and QCK remaining. There goes the res. Oh, Khalil will be not able to get up there. Shazam with the punish. And it's looking like Sentinels are about to pick up map one of this series. All that stands in their way now is Marzen. And that Cosmic Divide is it's going to be somewhat helpful, but there's so many players here. There's that quick pop flash and actually sick flashes himself, but doesn't matter. Shazam, the fearless leader of Sentinels, will take it over the line for his side. It was a noble effort by Furia, but we needed just a little bit more. Yeah, that was an incredible showing by Furia. I thought they looked like the better team up until maybe, you know, 15, 16 rounds into the game. But once Sentinels got their footing, stabilized, the nerve shook off of tens maybe, you know, they really settled into this game and they looked really, really solid tactically on the attack app. Yeah, and it's, it's interesting, right? Because we haven't seen Sentinels, the addition that's playing at Champions just yet. As we had mentioned previously, not much data on them. They're definitely a team that everybody's watching out for in this tournament. We have Shazam now on that Sova. We're going to see him on that yeah. role more often. And we're top going to see yeah. top, top fragging. Yeah, yes. there you go. Yeah, at the, at the top of the leaderboard, an ACS of 291 on the Sova roll. Head of 10s? That's head of 10s, Dan. All right, well, with that said, Sean, it is time to throw it to a quick break. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Valorant action shortly.